This episode of But Hey, What Do I Know is brought to you by an adequate amount of sleep and a nutritious diet. Isn't that right, Amanda? Completely. Absolutely correct. All right. Welcome to the latest episode of But Hey, What Do I Know? I'm your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Young Hip Hop. Three Three people call me that. It's all good. And joining me several thousand kilometers away is my lovely co-host, Amanda. Amanda, how are you feeling today? Exhausted. No, I feel good. Not really. I don't know. I feel okay. It's 5 a.m. I don't know how I feel. Yeah, this time I'm the well-rested one. And we need it today because we have a lot to cover, don't we? I hope so. I hope so. First of all, how have you been feeling? Because I don't think I talked to you like at all this week, barely. Um, exhausted. This I don't know. This is, this week was a blur. It was just like work, 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 and then weekend. You see me happy work, 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 work. You see me do me dirt, 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 dirt. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That that as well. But yeah, we're back in lockdown. So yay. Oh, shit, y'all are back in lockdown? That sucks. Yes, as of midnight Friday, we were back in lockdown. Well, we'll be back in lockdown for the next five days. So day one's done. Well done. Yay. Here in Florida, we don't give two shits about anyone's health. So we've been out and about, like, I think the whole time. I don't think we've been on lockdown. Like, you can walk into a place without a mask now. It's crazy. But now a mask is second nature to me. Like, I'll walk around the house, and I'll just be, like, slapping my face, and I'll go, oh, shit, where's my mask? And then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't need a mask, I'm at home. I don't know. I, just, I don't trust people, because people are dirty, and people are nasty, so I will always wear my mask, because, yeah, I don't trust people. I've never trusted anyone at all. You should know that about me. Well, that's that's a, another topic for another day, but what I'm saying is, I will always Does wear Amanda- my mask. I don't care if it's like not mandatory anymore because I don't know where you've been. So I'm just gonna just gonna keep wearing my mask until there's no COVID in the world. Oh, I have no problem wearing a mask. It's just that it's weird that like you walk in and people are just casually not wearing a mask and they don't think twice and they don't really care, which is crazy. And all these people are like, Oh, COVID's a myth and then I see them next week and they've got COVID and they're like, Oh my god, guys, take it seriously. It's real. Take it seriously. I got the Rona. It's not a myth. Read the Googles. Do them. Do your Googles. No, but uh, those. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's weird to me. Oh, yeah. Speaking it is of America. friends. Sorry. You guys, it is, you guys it is America. It is America. a lot of things. <laughs> we, don't, we don't give a shit about the health of our citizens, unlike you guys. Fucking land of milk and honey ass Melbourne. But it's oh, all no. good. You know, you know what? They were out protesting today. And they had the American flag and the Trump flag. And I'm like, well, if you hate it here so oh, that's much, lit. go to America. Go to America. Y'all, no y'all don't me. even support y'all y'all don't even support your own country. Y'all are repping other people's flags. That's dope. Traitors. Traitors. Treasonous Shout out to you guys. bastards. I'm like, if you hate it here so much and love America, why don't you just leave? <laughs> no one's stopping you. Get on the plane and leave. Hey, Amanda, do but, you know that we have we have three listens from Australia? Hi. And two of them are you. I'm almost sure two of them are you because I only know one other chick from Australia, and that's uh, Catherine John. And she listened because I know because uh, Buzzsprout, shout out to Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout gives me all the uh, the cities that people are like listening from, and she's from mm-hmm. Perth. So she's the only one from Perth. And then there's two from Melbourne. And I'm like, I don't know anyone else from Melbourne. So it's like you and like your brother or some shit. I don't know. No, it was, I think it was just me twice because I heard on, um, I listened to it on um, Spotify. And then I think on the website itself when I was working, like on the Buzzsprout thing. So it was probably yeah, speaking, just me. Speaking of that, we are now available on almost every platform because. These podcast platforms take way too long. 
Spotify, shout out to Spotify. I can't believe I'm saying this because I don't usually like Spotify. But Spotify, like, I was, I think we recorded the podcast at on S- Sunday, I think. Yeah. And then Monday at midnight, it dropped on Buzzsprout. And then I was like, wait a minute, it needs to be on Spotify. And you have to, like, apply for all the the platforms and they have to ask you, Hey, is it explicit? Are you guys Mm -hmm. murdering people live? You know, all that bullshit. And yes, I was like, they're like, Oh, it may take many months. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess nobody's going to listen to this podcast. And then I refresh it and boom, I'm on Spotify. And then, uh, what is it? Amazon followed soon after I was like, Amazon, I wanted Google podcast. I feel like, I mean, that's Google, you know, Yeah. they should, they should be on top of it. Google was last. Google was dead last. I had to tell Google that I was like I had a podcast. I was like, "Oh, hey was guys, I I, oh. I uploaded a podcast. Here's like an RSS feed. Can you guys like please?" Everyone else was like, "Oh, hey, I see. I see you have a podcast. Let me just put that out there." Yeah, but, I was going to yeah, reference that's, uh, something that I heard about Google Podcasts, but I I shall not reference. Um, no, go ahead. We're not we're not going to get any deals from them. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that I think I heard somewhere that like Google's one of like the slowest ones out of all the other platforms. Absolutely. Which is which is weird because, you know, they have like the Android people and they should be. Whereas like Apple Podcast was like on it for some like podcasters, but it was just Google was like the one that's always the slowest. No, you know what's yeah. hilarious to me? Spotify is multimedia. Like they Mu- they have music, they have podcasts, they have videos, all that. The amount yeah, of time that their algorithm, now. the amount of time. They used to have this series that I really loved. I can't remember the name of it, where uh, they would get like these, like a hip hop artist and a producer, and they'd put them in a car, mm-hmm. and they would be taking them to the venue that they were going to perform at. And while they're in the car, they have to write a song real quick. And it was pretty dope. I liked the idea, and then they just stopped doing it. I guess nobody was listening to it. Freaking Spotify, they never I was I was their one. Spotify, if you are listening that. somehow for any reason, bring that shit back because that was heat. That was fire. The first episode the first episode was T Pain and Southside. And I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. And, yeah, but well, I mean T Pain is amazing. Can like I didn't know he could sing like that. Shout out I to T Pain. That's could, that's Florida, baby. I knew he could sing, but I didn't know how amazing his voice is and then i heard him and i was like oh my god he's amazing well amanda do you know that for auto-tune to work you have to actually know how to sing i know but like you you have to know how to sing just a little bit like not like amazingly like no you have you have to know you have to know how to actually sing because what auto-tune does is it corrects your pitch by like half a semitone like it does very minor the hip hop artists that made it popular, mm-hmm. they were forcing auto tune to overcorrect, and sometimes it right. sounds cool if you know how to do it right. But for people that can actually sing, it just minorly corrects it. That's why, like Rihanna, Rihanna can sing, but if on the song "Work," you can hear mm-hmm. it whenever she hums. You can hear the auto tune because she's just humming just slightly off pitch, so it just corrects mm-hmm. a little bit. If you can't sing for shit. Auto tune is gonna, auto tune is gonna look at you like, hey man, I tried, but that shit was trash. I did the best I could. Because I remember, like when I sing, I can, I can't sing, but I can hold a note. So when I'm holding a note regularly, like auto tune will barely do anything to it. But when I start singing, you could actually like see the wavelengths that it's correcting, and that shit looks like, it looks like it's having a stroke. It's really bad. Well, like yeah. I'm never, I'm not singing an auto tune again, never in my life. We're not doing this. But well, where were we going? Amazing. We went on a tangent. No, we're talking about Spotify and artists writing a song and singing on the way to like a concert. And T Pain was one of the first ones to do it. And I was just saying, yeah, so he was amazing. He is. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what the T and T Pain stands for? Tallahassee. Tallahassee pain. That's one of our legends. Cause Florida, <laughs> I feel like Florida, 
No, but I feel like Florida doesn't get enough credit when it comes to hip hop. We like made a lot of dope shit. We have Kodak Black. I don't care how you feel about Kodak Black. Kodak Black is a legend over here, and No Flocking should be the Florida anthem. We have Trick Daddy. We have Trina. We have DJ Khaled. We have T Pain. <laughs> DJ Khaled. Do we used have to be like my my thing that I would watch every day on Snapchat, just to like get myself going. And I'm like, what are you doing with yourself? Stop! Stop watching him. Well, you helped him know. make millions, so that's <sighs> uh, that's completely on you. And it's like every day he would wake up, he would say hi to his lion outside, then he would go like. Um, do you You're hating on a dude for exercise? having a lion? Huh? He's, he's got a like lion. Himself. Stop hating on him. No, he's got like the statues of a lion. He'll be like, lion! <laughs> and then okay, he'll so do funny- little exercise and he never lost a weight, like uh, just a kilo of anything. So I was just like, okay. And then he would come back inside and eat his little um egg white omelette like i literally knew his routine from just watching him every day and i'm just like no i'm not doing this anymore <laughs> did you uh did you see that one video where he was putting porridge upon his plate oh my god he would he would go DJ into like, little he wish it was jamaican like he would start going on his little like uh, i just cannot like i couldn't deal with him anymore he's just a walking meme well, I mean, you got to give him credit. DJ Khaled lived in Miami, and that's where all the good food is. I mean, you got like the Cuban cuisine over there, and then you got Haitian food, and oh my mm-hmm. god, those are like two of like the most filling meals. I mean, you go get a Cuban sandwich, and then you get some porridge and some oxtail or something, because they serve oxtail over there. That's pretty popular, but I that'll fill you up. Oxtail. I had oxtail last week. And it, I, oh, it was so good. It cooked for like a long time. It was just simmering. And then by the time I got to it, it was just falling apart on the rice. Well, that's, oh, that's that shit right there. Mm. When the bone just I disintegrates. It, yeah, I cooked it um, on Friday night, you know, so we can indulge on the end of the week. Mashing some oxtails. Wait, you call the weekend the end of week? No. Okay, I was, I just, I was about to say, by the time... You're just ending the week with a nice oxtail. Got you. I thought, I thought you Australians say end of week. By the time you say end of week, Monday's around the corner. But you know what you Americans do that's are just so irritating? You don't say fortnight. But, yeah, say we don't bi-weekly. say fortnight. Bi-weekly yeah. is twice a... Yeah, anyways... It's exactly it's what a fortnight is. No, it's not. It's it's exactly what a fortnight is. Bi weekly. That's twice in a week. Okay, Amanda, we only have two Australian listeners and five listeners from Columbus, Ohio. Can you believe that? I don't know a single person from Columbus, Ohio. So shout out to you guys in Columbus, Ohio. Hit me up and tell me how the weather is there or something. I don't know. I want to get to know you five people that listen in Columbus, Ohio, or the one person that listened five times. I don't know. But <laughs> let's let's talk about something with some actual substance. Like yeah, sure. for example, um hmm, let's see. I got a list of things. I just want to pick like the most substantial, hard hitting topic. Oh, how long did it take you to realize that you were getting a lyric incorrect on a song or had no idea what a bar meant in a hip hop song? Uh, a lyric incorrect. I remember because I just listen to songs. I don't really participate in singing. Okay, what or blew bar. my mind? This is this is just a broad thing, but you know how they used to censor "fuck" with "love" in songs. Mm-hmm. You ever heard that? Like yeah. I would hear songs from my childhood, and I would be listening, and then I'd hear them again like ten years later, and I'd be singing along, and they'd go. They'd uh, replace love with fuck, and I'd look I at them kind of funny. I wanna love you. <laughs> yes, that's the song. And he goes, I wanna fuck you. And I look, and I go, oh, my God, what? I was a naive-ass oh, little kid. for no reason. I was a naive-ass little kid. No, because I, ma- I was thinking about it. I'm like, why would he, like, 
why would he look at her then and realize that he wants to love her? Like, that makes no sense. That has nothing to do with love. And then I was like, oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Or uh, what was another one? Since I'm the only one putting myself on the line, when Lil Wayne said, I don't tip, I pay bills, bitches call me Buffalo. I had no idea why they called him Buffalo for like five years. And what, what did it mean? Um, it's Buffalo Bill in the Wild West. It was like something we had in America where these uh, white people would go around dressed as cowboys and they would put on a play where they would like capture Indians and like kill them and shit. But it, it was like a play. They weren't really doing it. But it was like glorifying the Wild West. It's basically like the first Western film. It was like a cowboy circus. Mm. But, like, he doesn't tip, he pays bills. Bitches call him Buffalo, because, like, Buffalo Bills. And also, the team is called Buffalo Bills, but, I don't know. It was it was really stupid of me. I, I think I realized it at 3 a.m., driving to work one day. I was like, oh, that makes oh. sense. But everything, make, everything makes sense at 3 a.m. But now, now it's your turn to embarrass yourself. Go ahead. Um... I'm trying to think. Okay. Maybe like the, I think I told you about this 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 week when I was like at work and listening to music and then it just came up on my shuffle when Drake started talking about um, thick women and I just died laughing because I just like never, I don't know, I just haven't heard the song in a long time. Um, was the song with Nicki Minaj? Um, oh God, you know I, the I know song. what song you're talking about. I I can't remember the name of the song. What is it called? Um, it's with Nicki Minaj. Anyway, yeah, it's and uh, it's Drake and Lil Wayne. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's Wayne. Chris Wayne and Drake. Yeah, Chris Brown singing the chorus, and he says, "I like thick women." She said something about thick women, and I agree. I like my women BBW. And then he says, I'm obsessed with thick women, and I agree. Yeah. He's like, the kind that'll suck you up and then get lunch with you. I was like, what? Yeah, like, that's, really, that's, a dream, like, really, that's a dream come true. I was like, really serious, just like writing yes, like, my part you don't of the know. proposal, just like typing. And when I heard that line, I fell out of my chair dying and then i had to text you i'm like oh my god i did like I haven't how's that crazy such a long time no, it's not crazy i just haven't heard it in a long time and when i just heard him saying that while i was like at work like seriously working i just died like who says that <laughs> oh, i say yeah, that, that was... someone that's, that's like on my... say to their face yes like that's the first thing out of my mouth Like, like I'll I'll see I'll see I... look I'll be dancing in the club right and then I'll see a chick and I'll walk up to her and I'll tap her on the shoulder and when she turns around I go that's right I'm like my girl's BBW the kind that will stop you trying to lunch with you no I just I just stop at the BBW part and I just look at them and see what they say <laughs> like the, the like the DD meme where he just like they just stare at each other like what what do you say you know what I mean that's that shit's hilarious. That's my favorite GIF, like ever. I use that all the time. I would say something risky and then send that after, like what? Well, that's a that's a good topic you stumbled on completely by accident. What? What? What are your? What are the emojis in your phone? What are the first like five emojis? I'm just curious. Emojis. Okay. Let me go into my texting app and your texting app. I mean, so I have the crying laughing thing, which I heard. It's always from first. The, Everyone has that first. Well, is yours the side? The is yours the sideways one? No, it's the normal one. Okay. According to Gen X's, that is like so uncool. Like, don't do that. I'm like, I don't care. I'm old. I can do whatever I want. Um, then it's like the, like the, the tongue out, but like your, like the emoji is like smiling with the tongue out on the side. Like, yeah, I feel you. 
ear and then the star eyes. Oh, you the, okay? Smiley with the star you eyes. The, you got the dick print in your DM, didn't you? No, it's. I, I just use that to say like good morning to people because I don't want to be like too personal with them. The starry eyes is not oh. personal. Yeah, no, it's not personal. It's like it's. It's not the hard eyes. It's not like, you know, the passive aggressive smiley. It's in between, you know. Okay, yeah, I feel you. Um, I'm rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then the next one is like the cringe face. Okay. Um, and then the other one, or well, the fourth one is the girl with like the arms up to the side, like, hey, what do I know? That's totally you. Now on all DSPs. <laughs> Where to where to plug us there? And the last and the last one is the girl with the crossed arm emoji, because sometimes people just go too far, and I'll be like, "No, you need to reel it back in." So I'm just like, "I'm out. Let's let's go back, <laughs> restart this conversation." Yeah. So those are my five emojis. What are yours? All right. Let's see what mine are. Now, to give some context, like seventy five percent of the time, I am either laughing at something or if somebody sends me like a really crap meme i just kind of so it's the the first one is the crying laughing to the side like i'm dying laughing i'm rolling like that's just too much i've rolled all the way to the supermarket from how hard i'm laughing at your shit that's you doing too much i mean i gotta support my friends you know i only send that to like my buddies it's like okay yeah, I'll, I'll throw you one. That That is never going to any sort of chick, because no chick has ever made me laugh that hard. And if you can, I will, I don't know, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll throw you a what? t-shirt or something. I'll throw you some merch. Okay. Okay, so the second one is the straight face emoji. That's when somebody says some bullshit, and they're looking at me like, <laughs> and I'm looking at them like that. So it's like, no. all right, yeah, that was that was some that was some utter bullshit. The next one, this is one we have in common, is the tongue out emoji with the wink. I got like the wink. I'm like, ah, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Like the, no, I don't have that. That's too much. I'm I'm always doing the most. Yeah, you are That's, always doing the most. <laughs> Based I like, on I like all to, your emojis. I like to have fun, and I have a bland ass face. So, like, I want people to know that I have, I'm capable of human emotion. You know. Yeah. Sure. The next one okay. is a sigh. So, like, I usually send the straight face and the sigh in tandem. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like, and then the last one is the three hearts around the smiley face, and that I usually send that. When, like, there's a chick that says, oh, aren't you handsome? But I'm not really, like, feeling her or something. So I just, like, send her one of those. You know, it's, like, not but rude, I mean, but it's not. You have been using it a lot if if it's, like, in your top five. Yeah, because I've been getting a lot of compliments recently. Oh, you know what it is? Aww. I'm going to get so I'm gonna get so much flack for this, but I don't care. They're, they're going to listen anyway. I've had, like, four people ask me to be guests on the show. And I'm like, eh. Yeah, yeah, I'll see. I mean, I don't know. Maybe our tenth episode, the lucky. That's what I'm saying. Like, like let us build towards that. And then another thing is, people barely care about what I have to say. How am I going to convince them? Oh, um, here's some dude I used to know in middle school. Like, shit, he he played basketball Maybe for he a might year. Be more interesting than you, and then we he go might. off into the sunset. No, there's and there's one of my friends. There's one of my friends, shout out to Julian. Julian has been texting me nonstop with like podcast topic ideas because I've just been having him inspired. So if anyone's first on the list, it's him. So Julian, just hold on because we don't even have Amanda's mic levels yet. But the second we get Amanda's mic leveled, because I'm looking at the wavelengths right now, I am way louder than you. But I'm going to fix that in post-production. So to all the viewers out there. Because the mic is as close as it can get without being my... Oh, God, why did I say get like that? 
I'm like, okay, hold on. Brief, brief intermission. All you people that are complaining about the mic levels, do you know how hard it is to record a transatlantic podcast with somebody that you can't even like it's see face to face? And oh, turn the gain up. Nope. Get away from the microphone. Nope. Get close to the microphone. Like it's it's difficult. So to you people that didn't complain, thank you for being with us. And those people that did complain, bear with us or don't. You know, there's like billions of other podcasts out there, but nobody brings in content not, like not, we do. Not transatlantic. But also, since we're on the on the topic of emojis, what are your Transatlantic top five sounds cooler. Guests? I'm not saying trans Pacific trans Pacific, sorry. There is a Trans Pacific trade deal. It's a thing. Let's not get do, political. Do you, want, um, do, you, do you want to start trading? <laughs> sure. No, but what are your top five gifts? Gifts? Gif. Gif. Oh, gifts. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, hmm, let's see. Let's go on my phone. I have a, uh, yeah, go on your have phone. a whole bunch of. Go on your phone. And I have a and whole bunch us. of. I have a folder full of like gifts specifically for specific situations. Let's see. I know, but like, what are your top five? Okay, Don't number deal. one. Ha- number one has. Up. Number one has got to be Joe Budden falling down the escalator. What? There's a there's a gif of him falling down the escalator. Yes, if you haven't seen it, look it up. It's very easy to find. Um. Okay. It's it's hilarious. The second one, number let's two. See. Also, no, no, no. Before you move on to number two, what is the context in which you would use that? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty stupid if I say so myself. So if like I'm talking to a chick and she's not into me and I fall like flat on my face, I'll just send her that. Like that's like the end of the conversation. Or if I like forget somebody's birthday or like something awkward, it's like okay, I just fell flat yeah. on my face. Okay, that's a good one. Um, Next. Oh, oh, number two. Damn, I don't know how to rank these. I'm not. These aren't in any order because I just every time I see another one, no, I'm, I'm just like, no. Nah, but but your you, most gonna... frequently used ones. Okay, the second one is Shannon Sharp. Then saying that ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. I use that a lot. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Uh, number three is Funk F- Master Flex saying, "Yo, listen, that's called motherfucking bars. You don't know nothing about that." And he's that's like good. screaming, and there's like veins popping out. The fourth <laughs> one, well, this is number one. I use this one a lot, like the most often. Is that the but guy I just that got his it. body done? Yes, he, that was the one that got his body. Yeah, okay, yeah. Go yes, the one Next. that just hates on everybody. Um. Well, the first, the one I use the most, but I don't count this one because this is just like part of everyday speech. Is the, the this drop? <laughs> like I use that consistently. That's that's become my laugh almost. But he's hilarious. Spice Adams, shout out to mm-hmm. you. Loved you, loved you on the Chicago Bears. Um. Oh, he this last hilarious. one. This last one is uh, there's a meme of Drake. When the Raptors were like losing or something, and they mm-hmm. catch him, like he's throwing his hands up and he's all frustrated and he's like moving his head, acting like the coach on the side. Yeah, honor- honorable mention is Dave Chappelle saying, "Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this? This is ridiculous. I don't want to dance. I'm scared to death." That's that's honorable mentions right there. But I have a whole bunch of them that I've just made myself, like out of context that nobody really. Uses like would that. Understand. Well, it's not that they wouldn't understand. It's that I made them, so like you can't like readily find them. Like Joe oh, Budden true. on his podcast telling Savon to go grab the nasty award out of the cupboard. <laughs> or oh. uh, no, I've sent this one to you before. Or uh, a lot of them are Joe Budden because Joe Budden's just hilarious. Shout out to him. But it's him confronting that Angel Diaz dude at Complex, and he's just telling him, no, you wrong. You wrong. You just wrong. And he's just yelling at him the whole time, and it's hilarious. What are your gifts? Well, okay. My first one is um, Gordon Ramsay in Hell's Kitchen saying, come here, you. (laughs) 
Yeah, you sent me um, that one very recently. Yeah, so that's like on, on the top of the list. And I've sent that to like multiple people when they've said like something that just like irritated me. I'd be like, come here. I'm going to beat you. Um, second one is the Diddy one of them just like staring at each other. That's legendary um, that's, right there. Pers- that's a personal favorite. The third one is the one that I use frequently is Marge, you know, hanging your head in shame, like, um, or just, like, just being awkward, you know, the, the gif of like Marge is like hiding her face. Oh, that's, from. that's what you use when you, when you're like being nasty, but you know, you're like, you're not supposed to be nasty. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, the fourth one is Spice Adams taking his sunglasses off, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't do the one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did it for you. The fifth one is it's it's Joe Budden realizing something on TV and just breaking into the fourth wall and looking at the camera. Oh, like, oh you know what that you God. know what that is? That was Joe what? realizing that that chick was transgender live on air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite. And I use that all the time when someone says something weird, and I'm just like. You know, yeah, I can't I believe I don't have I that don't... saved. I need to save that. Oh my god, that is my favorite gif of Joe Budden. Him just like breaking to the fourth wall. You can see the gears in his head, like just going. Like, is am I hearing what I'm hearing right now? Is is this it? And his his um girlfriend, fiance, wife was sitting next to him, like just you know relaxing and. Listening to the conversation, and he's just like, "Oh my!" Like having a realization. It was just the funniest thing. That's like one of my favorite gifts. Well, people say that's because I think he had relations with her, and then she like went out and just like randomly what? told everyone that she was trans. That's what I'm hearing. Oh I don't know. My. Joe, don't kill me. Joe, Joe, Joe. Well, I Joe, mean, and then as a fellow Joe, mentioned- don't kick my ass. Honorable mention is um, Michael Jordan laughing and then crying. It's yeah, just all his little reactions in like one. When I just don't know how to like react to something that someone's saying to me, I send that to them. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool. those are my gifts. Okay, now there's oh, something. One more, one more, one more is the leave Britney alone. That's also my favorite. Very topical right now since everyone's talking about Britney Spears, but that's who was talking about Britney Spears. A a documentary came out like last week of how people were abusing her and shit. So, and where can people find this documentary, Amanda? On the internet. Yes, that's right. Amanda supports piracy. No, it's like on a streaming platform i don't know which one but it's on one of them so far so far on this podcast between two episodes we've learned that amanda is easy and she supports piracy so oh and she's also like just a brick wall like you can't she never talks to her friends and that's why we only have three listens how many friends do you have zero yeah that's true i I can't wait for them to hear this even though they won't because only three people listen to them um, so, you know, no, you know what you just reminded me of, we stumbled what? on another topic the other day, which was pretty funny where, um, mm-hmm. I was going through the drive through because, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, obese. I'm not obese, but you know, I'm kind of fat and drove through the drive through and Amanda was hearing You're me order because we were on the phone. Yes. I'm fluffy, mm-hmm. but that's trademarked. I can't use that, but thick. Don't ever call me like thick again. Women and I. No, no, you could you could call me thick, but <laughs> I don't want to hear none of y'all. I know there's 27 from pe- people from Jacksonville that heard that shit. I don't want to hear none of y'all ever call me thick. I'm watching y'all, but I was going through the drive thru and Amanda was hearing me talk to the people, and I was like, "Hey, hello, how are you doing? Thank you. It's a beautiful day at Chick Fil A. The weather's seventy two degrees. Uh, would you like a back massage or something?" And Amanda's like, "Why are you guys so like?" polite over there and i'm like well what do you guys say and amanda why don't you tell them how ordering in australia is like 
Yeah. Oh, when I heard that, it was just like, it's just too much. Like, I don't want to know you. I don't want to know how, like, uh, how I am. Like, no, don't ask me that. Because over here, you just, when you go to, like, Macca's, McDonald's, you drive through and then they just say, hi, welcome to McDonald's. What's your order? And then you put in your order and then they just say, drive through to the next window, please. Go to the next window, you pay, and then they'll tell you to go pick up. And then you go there, and then if they're not ready for your food, they just tell you, could you please wait in the waiting bay? There's no, like, how are you? How's your, how's your day going? No. It's just, like, hi, welcome, what's your order? That's it. But like, hey, I heard little, America, I heard, just, I heard little Jimmy had a baseball game today. <laughs> It's like a, like a little therapy session. It's just like, nah, I don't want to tell you how I am. Because then what if I unload on you and like, no, actually, my day's been really terrible. Yeah, nobody, nobody does <laughs> that except do? for me. I, I do that sometimes. Like if <laughs> I want to see that. Well, not at the drive through. That's like those those people are on, are on edge and like they're just waiting for one person to ruin their day. They're if probably going to stab the themselves or stab somebody. Well, if you're going to ask so me cool how I that. am, like, I'm going to tell you. Well, then actually, I'm really depressed and I was just about to kill myself, but then I got hungry, so I drove here. Now, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> no, but um, over. In over here in like Florida, especially, I'm talking about the South. I don't know how Columbus, Ohio, gets down because that's like the North. But here in the South, like what you just described is considered like mediocre service, where there's just like, "Hey, what's your order? Go to the window. Here you go. Goodbye." Like here, you gotta like really get to no, know the customer, so you, like I milk them from you. all their money and shit. But I don't know. Maybe it's just like a nice because. No, in in the South, they care about everyone except people of color. So as long as you're not a person of color, they'll like you know greet you and hi, how you doing? Uh, how was little Jimmy's baseball game? I heard you and your wife are having some like trouble in the help? bedroom. You know, like stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, do you, I mean, I could be a oh, third no, that's if you too want. Fun. <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> no. Like, hey, do you want you want to be a third? You want to be a third? I'm gonna look at him like, like, what are you what are you talking about? What are you Say talking about, bro? Say less. Blink, Knock blink your once. Teeth out if it's the, yes. the window, are you kidding me? <laughs> No, I used to work. I used to work at a Dairy Queen. I don't know what kind of stupid name you Australians have for that. Okay, so for all you Jacksonville listeners, Burger King has taken over Australia as Hungry Jacks. Yeah, it is. It is Hungry Jacks here, and I don't eat Hungry Jacks because I don't know. Yeah, it hasn't taken over anywhere. Anything that Jacksonville touches turns to shit. So, no, it hasn't taken over Australia, but it's just it's been here for a while. No. I, I don't, don't want a nice I'm big whopper. You don't want a whopper. I, I, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't go to Hungry Jack's if just out of like nobody uh, goes there voluntarily. You know, I'm not going to go there voluntarily. Is what I'm saying. Like, I'd go there if I'm like. If I'm dying of hunger and there's like nothing else around and there's only like one place to eat and that place was hungry. All right, well, let's yeah, uh, let's stop there, talking but... about a failing uh, franchise and go to another fra- failing franchise. Because when I used to work at Dairy Queen, I almost said Burger King again. Burger King, Dairy Queen. They should just get married and just start serving shit food. But anyway, I used to work at Dairy Queen and God damn, that job was boring, especially working drive through. And I knew people would like be having like the worst days ever, like going through the drive through. So I'd like mess with them. Like we, I'd put like the, uh, I'd put like a fan. They had a fan, I guess, fan us because it was really hot in there. And I would put it right up to the mic and I would talk through it. You know, that fake auto tune we used to all do as kids. And I'd go, welcome to Dairy Queen. How can I help you? And they'd be like, what? 
so technologically advanced they have like a robot <laughs> no you ever um damn this is probably only an american thing you ever been through like a drive through and they have like the robotic greeting and then like somebody comes in and takes your order like they'll be like they'll have like a pre-recorded greeting like hi welcome to taco bell or something no I love- Oh my god! I love going to the I love going to the ghetto fast food joints because they'll cut them off like right in the middle. They're like, "Hello, and thank you for hey, what you want?" And I'm like, "Whoa, okay, my bad. Um, I was just here for a chalupa supreme, but just damn, okay, my bad. Please don't hurt me. Chalupa like shit. supreme, what is that? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't eat at Taco Bell anymore anyway because they took all their good shit out and now they just make regular bland." dog shit food but yeah speaking of taco bell they opened a taco bell in australia what? In Melbourne. what oh my god okay this blew my mind so last week i went well last sunday i went grocery shopping and i went i drove down to maccas to get coffee and i was driving mac and i saw this like massive like new sign with like a pink bell and like purple and stuff and I was like what the hell is that because like I've never seen like a you know a logo like that before but it was like next to like food places so I was like oh that's like a random party shop next to it I looked at it and it said Taco Bell and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> when did Taco Bell become a thing here one time for yeah, Taco so Bell if you're, in, um, if you're in Melbourne <laughs> if you're in Melbourne there's a Taco Bell in Altona Go there if you want to try talk. I'm not going there to try. Or don't it go I'm there. Scared. Don't if it's the same <laughs> menu. If, if it's if it's the same menu they have here, you might as well just not go because that shit is terrible. They took all the fun uh, shit out. Yeah, I, I might I might try it one time. You know, just for the for the shits and giggles. You know, you might like it. I mean, you dress like a divorced mom, so like I'm sure you like bland, terrible food. So what are you talking about? Um, have you seen my cooking? Okay. Um, for all the and uh, terrible is not part of it. Okay. While um while she just rambles about her cooking, for the people listening to the podcast, I'm going to do an Amanda Fitz page, and I'm every time Amanda wears something that I deem to be hilarious, which is probably all the time. I'm going to update that page. So I want you guys to follow it right after this podcast. I'm going to make it. It's called Amanda Fitz. Or something along those lines. That's probably taken. But it's listen. It's I don't dress any different from all the girls here. It's just in winter you just wear long coats. I am never going to Australia coat. if that's how you dress. No, you were talking about. She was telling me a story. She's not going to tell you guys this story, but she was telling me a story about how it was like dead summer and she's wearing like a trench coat or some shit, like a fur overcoat, looking yeah, like Cruella okay. Deville. Two weeks ago. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. And I checked the weather, and it said that it would cool, like it would cool down significantly. God, I can't speak significantly in the afternoon. So I took my fur coat with me. Your fur <laughs> coat? Fur. You couldn't bring a hoodie? No, because it wouldn't go with my outfit. Yeah. I took a fur coat with me. You have to look like we you went. have to look like a like a discount supervillain chick. So you have to wear fur coats wherever you go. We were just like we were just hanging out at like a friend's house, and then well, not my friend, my mom's friends, and then I just like left, I disappeared, went to my car, got my coat, and came back, and they're like, "Where did you get that coat from?" <laughs> because we were all just like hanging inside the house, and then I just disappeared and came back with like a whole long fur coat. <laughs> but I mean, I just I just like my coats. And now I have to find space in my wardrobe because I have way too many coats. Yeah, I know. That's what I was trying to tell you. But anyway, how did we get great? on? How did we get on coats from Taco Bell? We need, we need oh, to just stop. Me being a divorced mom and liking terrible things in life. How many kids do you have, honestly? Ten. That's what I tell everyone. So you look you look like a ten you look like day, a ten kid divorced mom. Back in the day when I was on the dating apps. Um, when people would ask me, because I don't know, I just give off the energy of like an old woman, people would be like, um, are you like 
married, single, divorced, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I'm divorced with 10 children. Would you like to be their father? Because <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for a father figure for my children. And then I would just, or they would be like, they would ask me like what I do and I'll just, I always would tell them that I'm a stripper because, I mean, it says in my bio that I'm like, you know, where I went to school and all that, you know, it, it just copies your things from your social media. Anyways, and then they would still ask me what I do and then I'll just tell them the strip. And they believe me. Yeah, because you wear. Apparently black women can't, <laughs> black women can't no, be anything other than strippers. It's not. It's according not to these you, white people. It's not that you're a black woman. I'm, I'm going to shit up. I usually don't defend the caucasity of people, but I'm going to defend it just this once because. Mm-hmm. You wear fur coats all the time. So if I looked at you and it was like No, not nine, all the time. If it was not 90, all the time. This is my first fur coat. But okay, like if, on my on my dating you, apps, it's just you have me giant coats. Clothes. You have big coats. If it was eighty Fahrenheit, I don't know what that is in Australian, and two people listen to this, so y'all can do the conversion. But if it was eighty Fahrenheit and you had on a fur coat, I would assume you have nothing underneath because you would be suffocating. You would be dying. What? If, no, when when I wear my coat, I always wear jeans or like pants with them with boots. So obviously, you would see that I have something on underneath. But my photos on my dating apps are like just me in normal clothes, doing normal things. In what world do I look like I could be a stripper? Like, look at me, look at me. That's do just, I look like I could be one? Yes, everyone, look at her with all the social media and pictures she has up. Good luck finding any. You know, people um, have been people have been yeah. trying to find you. They're like, "Oh, Amanda sounds cool. Let me go find her." And then you can't find Amanda. You know. Well, even so. if I have my Instagram on, I have no photos on my Instagram. So. No, that's your like you finsta wouldn't. where you post books and a whole bunch of boring shit. Nobody reads anymore. That's what I've been trying to tell this podcast. Everyone reads. The cool people read. Yes, cool people. I'm I'm the coolest. Yes. I'm I'm too cool for school because I read. Yes, yes. Did you guys have those like, like say that. no to drugs like red ribbon uh, parades or something? Or like, did y'all have something like that? Oh, over here, yeah. no, we had the giraffe. A giraffe. Yeah, I think his name was Henry. Henry um, the giraffe. <laughs> that sounds yeah, like somebody that's. To- that looks like somebody I would meet while I was tripping. Like that is not a good way to get me to not do drugs. No, seriously, I think I think someone, the person that came up with that idea, was probably tripping when they when they came up with that. But yeah, he comes to school and he tells the kids not to do drugs. But I remember speaking of drugs, like in high school, we would have like theater companies come in to our schools to do like you know plays like. Like, you know, every year you have, like, a theatre company come in and they would do, like, stage plays um, I did for, not like, go an to incursion. A, I didn't go to a Caucasian school, Amanda. We never had any plays. Anyways, so these are, like, university students that are, like, studying drama um, or, like, stage, like, theatre or something. And they would, like, put together plays and they would come and do stage plays in our schools. Anyways, <laughs> one year it was, like, such a... Like, it was just, like, such a full-on play. Um, I think we were, like, 14, and it was, like, this person who was on drugs and, like, ran away from home and then got into a car accident and didn't say goodbye to his family. And it was, like, just, like, it was just too much. And we were, like, all dying, sobbing, crying in the theatre. <laughs> it was, like, and at the end it was just, like, don't drink and drive, kids, because see what happens when you do. You kill a whole family. No, they don't. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that in America until after you've done like a DUI. Then they make you go to school, and then like you have to watch this slideshow online about people like being decapitated in car accidents and shit. But what we used to have <laughs> when we were in school was this red ribbon week, where like the whole week was dedicated about saying no to drugs. And at the end, there was like a parade. And I remember we were we were in like the hood, like we were in the straight slums at um. I don't know. Most some of y'all might know this. Susie Talbert on 19th Street. That's like the in the middle of the 
of the sticks, like just right in that shit. And we would march around. We're sitting there saying no to drugs, saying no to drugs. And all these people around us are looking at us like we're the dumbest kids in the world. <laughs> and sure as shit, half my friends, <laughs> we, all ended up doing, we all ended up doing drugs. <laughs> Every single one of us. <laughs> it pushed you over the edge. It made me want to try. I was like, dude, shit, like this marijuana shit sounds kind of lit. Allegedly. Allegedly. <clears throat> no, I, I think like in, um, when we were in year 11 or 12, so that's when like around the time that you would start, people would start getting their licenses. We had um like a double period. So it was, I think it was in the morning or maybe just after recess. No, it was in the morning just before recess. They took out that whole morning, like they blocked off that whole morning for someone to come in and tell us of all the traumatic things that could happen while you're driving. And and this guy came in with like one leg and he's like, see this? This happened during car accident. <laughs> this could be you. <laughs> this could be you. <laughs> and, it, and they were saying like, this is such a big responsibility when you get your license, you have to be responsible with it because you are now an adult. You're on the road. You're sharing the road with a lot of people and completely agree. But like, God, this was like nine o'clock in the morning, you know, before school started and they were like traumatizing us in there. I don't know. Then we have like assemblies that every every Monday morning you would come in and you would sit in like this long assemblies and they would tell you how you would die and you would end up destitute because you didn't pass your exams and go to university and then people would have mental breakdowns in there because they're like, oh, my God, I have, like, an exam coming up and I'm not going to make it and I'm going to end up on the streets. <laughs> it was so traumatizing. I hated high school because, yeah, these people would just traumatize us every week. Well, let me, let and me tell ask us you something. how we'll fail in life. Let me ask you something. Have you ever gotten a DUI? Well, then, Never. Well, then I think it worked. I got parking tickets. Oh, no, uh, not the parking, parking tickets. tickets. Freaking goody two-shoes. I know. And that's pretty much it. I th- I don't think I've gotten, like, a speeding fine um, or, like, I've never run a red light. I'm like, I'm good. I've run mad red like, lights. There's a lot of cameras here, so you can't really... And even like, even if you want to appeal against it, you know what they do? They send um, a letter with a photo of your car running the red light in the mail to you. So you can't really like, you can't say, oh, no, it wasn't me. It's the photo is right there. Now, when they had, when they had the videos here, well, when they had the cameras here, they would send you a video online. So you could like see like, hey, you ran the red light. But then thank yeah. God for America because we're not in Melbourne. We deemed it unconstitutional in Florida, so they took them down. So I think there's only like a few cities in Florida that still have them. But oh man, one of those. But they were extra. Yeah, they were extra lenient too. Like if you crossed, as long as your back tires crossed right before it hit red, you were in the clear. Like the second it turned red, it would take a picture. So if like if you had like an inch of tire on the line when it hit red mm-hmm. you're getting a ticket but i'm sure like because i there was ones where i ran and i was like dude i'm getting a ticket for sure and then that ticket never came and then there was ones where it was like yeah i mean there's no way i ran that it was still yellow i was looking at it the whole time and then i get a ticket and i'm like what and then they look I mean, and it's literally like going at the now go ahead names what i'm saying is if you're going at the speed limit and it turns yellow on it it's it's safer to cross over than to like stop, like just break really hard because that's, then that's how I got into my first accident was pilot. somebody somebody yeah that's how I got into my first accident was uh, somebody slammed on the brakes instead of running the yellow light and we ended up just having a four or five car pileup. This is stupid. Yeah, enough. don't do that. And also, it's not safer to drive slower. Just go. Like follow the speed limit. I don't. I don't understand how people think that it's much safer to drive slower when you're driving on like the freeway where you're supposed to be doing like one of the safest highways in the world. 
One of the safest highways in the world is uh, the Autobahn in Germany, and there is no speed limits on that bitch. You drive as fast as you want to go. If you want to drive slow, you get in one lane, and if you want the full road to yourself, get out of the way. Because a lot of people know how to get out of people's way. But when you're slowing down and you're forcing people to slow down, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm 100% sure here, but in Florida, the only reason they enforce speed limits is to make money off speeding tickets. Because there will be places where the Mm -hmm. speed limit will randomly completely change. Like you'll be going like 60 on the highway, 60 Mm -hmm. miles per hour. That's 100 100 Ks. Yeah, mm-hmm. 102 Ks, something like that. So you'd be going 100 Ks, and then all of a sudden it just randomly screeches to 80. And there'll be a there'll be a cop waiting right there. And if you don't slow down immediately, that's a ticket. That's the craziest thing. Because we, uh, our, yeah. our cops have to meet quotas. Well, so, it's the same here. What kind, why would a cop need to meet a quota? Like, oh, wow, people didn't commit enough crime. Go follow them around till they do something wrong and then hit them with like a $300 ticket. Well, with, with parking tickets, it's because um, councils have to make some money of, you know, some somehow. So uh, during the lockdown, because there were, you know, we were in a hard lockdown for a couple of months here in Melbourne, people went driving to the city or parking, like, they weren't using street parking where you have to pay and um, councils were losing money. So after the lockdown, when everyone started going back into the city and back to, like, you know, doing normal shit, um, they would they started finding people who, like, went over, like, just a second over, like, the parking time allowance and people were getting fined left, right and centre, like, get a fine you get a fine in america in america you're getting punched in the mouth for something like that we don't do that here i mean we do but like we're extra lenient we don't really care like if somebody if somebody writes me a ticket because i'm like a second off i'm like walking to my car somebody's mouth is getting punched somebody's teeth is getting knocked out i'm not having that like those people that i mean those cops that pull me over for doing like 60 and a 55, like you're nuts, you're crazy. There's a dude right next to me that was doing 85. You could have gotten like a way easier ticket, but now you're just haggling me over five miles an hour and you've just ruined my insurance and all that other stuff. Well, now I, I got to go take classes. Like it's crazy. The allowance, the allowance over here for, for like the speed limit is like five over or under, then you're fine. But then if you go like 10 over, then that's absolutely ridiculous. You can't be doing like one ten in the hundred zone, like no. Or you can't no. be doing like, because you know, like school zones, for example. Yeah. School zones are like forty k's, right? If you're doing fifty, sixty, then you deserve to be fined. Like that's just not an option. But go on, tell your story. Allegedly, something oh, happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegedly. And you didn't hear this from me, but I'm sure a mm-hmm. lot of people already know this. But when the cops turn the sp- like the speed gun to like flash you, they're turning it five mm-hmm. miles over the limit. So in a 50 zone, I just do 54, and it never tips the radar off. As long as you never hit 55, you'll be straight. Because they, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the they no, give you like they, an allowance. They let you go. No, I'm not at five miles an hour. They don't let you go here unless the cop really doesn't care. The problem with Jacksonville is the cops either give zero fucks or they give every fuck in the world. Like you'll you'll get you'll get some cop. Like I've breezed by cops doing like 85 on the highway, 85 miles an hour. I don't know what that is in kilometers. And they'll just wave at me. They'll be like, hey, man, what's up? And then I'll be doing 70 and a 65, and he's pulling me over. He's screaming at me like I'm endangering the world. And I'm like, what? Like, there's a there's a shooting like, like across the street. Why don't you go, like, take care of that? But, like, the cops over here, um, they don't, like, use the speed gun thing. They just, like, they park their cars on the side of the road, and it's usually an unmarked police car, so there's, like, no markings on it. It just looks like a normal car, Um, but they all usually – usually they use, like, SUVs. So if you see, like, a 
I don't know, like a Toyota Kluger or like a Kia something or like a Honda or Hyundai like parked on the side of the road, like the, the little SUVs, like the mini SUVs, you know that it's a cop car and they have like massive cameras um, in the boot of the car or trunk, Americans, they say trunk, right? Yeah. In the boot of the car. And they just leave the car on the side of the road and it does its thing. Like it, it's, but it's, it's not even like you have to be super, super dumb and dense to not know that it's a cop car. Cause who parks their car just on a nature strip randomly and just leaves it there and walks off? You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how many people do that in America. Yeah, there are some really dumb asses out there. But like, no, like their is- car, their car gets <laughs> stranded and they have to get it like towed or something. That's just sitting there. I've seen a lot of cars where it's like, oh my god, that might be a cop, but it's not. It's just like but some like, dude. These are brand brand new cars because you know how like over here they the cops they get new cars every year, and now it's like it's not just like the um the Asian cars like the Toyotas and the Kias and all that. Now they get a lot of European cars, so you would see like a nice BMW or Mercedes like parked on the side of the road, and it's it's cops. And like while we're still on that, like how much money do we have that all the cops are now driving around in AMGs? In in they're Australia, making they're making it off BMWs. of you. They're making it off of you. <laughs> That's true from, from all the fines. <laughs> That's what I hate. That I can't stand that shit. Like no, they used to tell- be like. They used to just drive Australian cars, like just Holdens and Fords, and now Holdens and Fords are not around. Australian cars. You're welcome. Well, they used to, they used to drive Commodores. That's yeah. like the standard Holden, Australian cop car. But Holden like, is Holden is Chevy. That's us. You're welcome. Yeah, true. But like, what I'm saying is, they used to drive Commodores, which is and Falcons, which are like Australian cars. But now they drive around in like. Mercedes and BMW. No, we it's usually just, I'm we like, usually use uh, American cars, and they have cars specially commissioned for them. So it's like, let's say, a Ford Taurus, but it's a modified Ford Taurus. So it looks different enough to where it's like, okay, that's a cop car. But the other day, not the other day, this was years ago, but where, what did I pull them up? You know those Honda Odyssey minivans, like those giant ones, the family minivans? Yes, the ugly those? ones. Yes. Yeah, there was – one of those was a cop car and he pulled somebody over for speeding and I I wanted to get out of my car and just pummel that cop. It's like, dude, you're in a minivan? Because here, like they don't – they the only time they use like Japanese cars and they use like regular cars is if they're either undercover, mm-hmm. like they're investigating somebody or they're like highway patrol. But you're using a Honda Odyssey minivan? You are a horrible person. Well, I should not have to watch my speed around a minivan. Like the crime scene unit, they use a minivan because they carry around like equipment. So they have like this um, Volkswagen minivans. No, we use full size vans um, for that kind of stuff. And they're marked. Like 90% of the vehicles are marked. Oh, like yeah. The white, no, they police, marked. all that. Yeah. Yeah. But the ones that are unmarked are like the really nice like European cars or the SUVs. The unmarked SUVs are like Japanese and Korean cars. But yeah, but they're always, always brand new, like super, super new cars. So you know that it's it's a cop car. Like if, if you don't know, then you deserve to be fine because you're that dumb. All I'm saying is, if I run, whoever drives that Honda Odyssey cop car, your mom's a hoe, and I mean that wholeheartedly. And I better not your catch you. Your mom's a hoe. Your mom is a hoe, and I better not catch you anywhere near. I'm not going to say oh, no, the area because that then is you're going like to look for a terrible car. It's not a terrible car, but it's a terrible cop car. You should not be driving if, around. If I ever become unless, a mother, which will never happen, I, you would. You will not catch me die, like in a in a minivan. I would rather die than drive a Come minivan. Come on, kids, get in my if Ferrari have, like, Tessarossa. Shut up, Amanda. You're gonna get a family car. If you, yeah, exactly, exactly. If if you can't fit in the car, then you're staying at home. You're not. I'm not getting a minivan to fit all my children in there. No, Amanda's Stay the type. Home. Amanda's the type of chick that removes all the seats except for the driver's seat and then just goes, "Oops." 
I'm not getting a minivan to accommodate all the children. If you can't fit in the minivan, then, I mean, if you can't fit in my normal size car, like a, then you're staying home too bad, so sad. Oh, man. You are- That's why I'm not having children, because I'm, I'm going to be cruel. Yeah, don't don't have kids, please. I'll feel very bad for them. And Uncle Joseph will not, will bail, not. Them. Uncle Joseph will not bail them out. And don't make sure they don't call me Uncle Joseph. I mean, the Earth is just overpopulated as is, so we don't need any more children. Yeah, because we were we were all looking to you to populate the Earth, Amanda, our savior. No, it's just, I'm just saying, like, we have, you know, climate change issues, and the more people we add to it, the more we exaggerate, oh, God, I can't speak, it's 5 a.m. Or you can, or you you know, can educate your kids so that they, uh, no, they're not no, sacks of shit. The, the more mouth you have to fill, like, oh, God, I can't even, the more mouths you have to feed... That's like more food that has to be produced, and da, 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 da. it's just it's like a compound kind of thing that is just. Yeah, my great my great grandfather had like twenty five kids. Oh my god! What was he like? Was he trying to like populate the village or something? No, <laughs> he was trying. He, he was he was trying to have a male. Oh, they were all women. They, he just kept popping out girls, and then when oh. when he finally got his. Uh, his uh, son. Yeah, he finally got his son. He was like, oh, the, it's the sons. Like, the sons are coming. And he was trying for another one, and then he just kept getting girls. So, like, he'd get, like, seven, eight girls, and then, like, a son. And then seven, eight girls, and then, like, a son. And then his wife died, and then he remarried, and then he had two sons. And it's because she died girls. from having too many children. Probably, yeah. I, I looked at her and said, man, I'm, I feel bad for you. Because now we know that it's the man that decides whether the gender is male or female. It's on the male side. So it's like she can't help it. She's just getting her getting her back blown out <laughs> every night. <laughs> and having to <laughs> having to yeah, wait nine I, months. Sure. And I mean, I'm sure that's that's like the fun part of it, but it's the, the going through the pregnancy part and birthing. No, the child I'm laughing because I'm, I'm sure. laughing because it's terrible because it's like she has to go through all that and then pop it out and it's a girl and you got to start all over again. And then even when you get a boy, he still wants more. So you got to go through that. It's like it's like the lottery. If you win, you lose. And if you lose, you lose. Could you imagine being married to someone like that? I would. And. Somebody's life. I don't know. Usually it's the women that are like dying to have children. Yeah. God no. Yeah, you're you're the only exception. You don't have social media, you don't have friends, and you don't want children. Nobody is looking to you to be the the spokesperson of women. And if I would have known this before I started the podcast, I probably would have not picked you at all. <laughs> I'm like, Amanda's relatable, and then you start talking, and like there's just crickets everywhere in the audience. Not one person. Amanda's uh, like am, listen, Amanda's like, am I right, guys? And everyone, you just hear crickets. No, but you know what? It's I hate I hate the Instagram lifestyle of just like people. Okay, I'm gonna be a hater right now because I wasn't before. Go ahead and but hate. It's just listen. It's just people that just got married like recently, and they would post everything about them and their husband, like. Oh, me and such and such. That we means they're going through this it. And this is how we we plan our meals and we cook together and we eat together and we make sure that we do everything together and we're so helpful and so organized and da, da, da. I'm like, oh, shut up. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like, why do you have to post everything about your life every day and how helpful you are and how organized you are and how, like, just everything's so together and we are always like doing photo shoots and posting it on Instagram. Like, oh God, shoot check, me. Check, check back in a few months and I'll guarantee you like that shit is, that shit went so far left that it's right. And people, like a lot of people like got married in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, like, for the love of God. We were in a lockdown and they were like finding ways to get married. I was just like, 
like you could wait like you won't die you hear, could wait my it's cousin one of my cousins got married excuse me and the only people that would go to the wedding because everyone else is in canada is my mom and dad so i was like they're like we're going to canada or not we're going to california i was like okay so you're telling me that you are going to go to the second hub of covid and go to a party and dance and mingle and get sneezed on and, I don't know, fucking wipe people's noses with your lapel. And then you're going to come back to the first hub of COVID and bring that fresh COVID back to us for a wedding. Inoculate the plane. And they have to get married now. They can't get married, like, in a month, two months. Next they year. have. They're so uh. in love. That if they don't get married right now, all like suddenly shit's just gonna split in half. The earth is gonna crumble. Jesus is gonna come back again. Like there's no way they could ever oh. get married except for today. And they're like, yes. And well, just like, be, okay. be like a decent human and like elope, and you don't have to rope people into your shit. Well, I hit them with the Lysol so quick when they came back. I'm not getting COVID. <laughs> Good. Fuck all that. Stand outside. Let me hit you with the no. pressure wash hose. <laughs> But like people, so many people got married. I just could not understand. Like, ugh, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, just on Instagram the whole time, it's just them. First of all, it was the first half of the year was people, them, like these brides that are like not going to get married. Or I mean, they were losing their minds. Like, oh my god, it's not going to happen. I was planning this my whole life, and it's been my dream. And they're like crying, going on Instagram Live, like losing their minds, crying. And I'm just like, okay. And <laughs> there's people that are dying, and you're like crying, losing your mind over your wedding. Like, just relax. Well, to be fair, and then they worked their way every- around it. They got married. So go on. No, it was it was something misogynistic. I ain't gonna worry about it. <laughs> yeah, anyways, so now they're married and now it's like every day it's them posting photos of how perfect their lives are. I just cannot like I can't stand them. This this kid that we went to school with, his brother got married. Like he met the girl in the middle of the pandemic. Aww. Um three months after meeting her, proposed to her. And then oh. they got married like a month or two later. No. And then they went on to their honeymoon. Um, and while they were at their honeymoon, the borders closed because Melbourne got put into like a, That's lit. We That's... Were, they were closing borders again. <laughs> and they, they were stuck in the other state. I'm like, that's what you get. You can, like, it does, like, you just get married and just wait it out until, like, you know, everything's fully opened up and gone, like, your honeymoon. Like, you didn't have to travel. But no, they had to because, you know, they had to post photos for the gram. Dude, the gram is where it's at. <sighs> Instagram is killing people and it should die. Instagram should die because. Shout out to Instagram. It's terrible. Instagram is not terrible. I'm not you shouting just, out Instagram. You know what? No, you're slandering Instagram. Yes, it is. I'm going to slander you back. You got, you're mad because some dude hacked your shit. So now you're just mad at Instagram. That's not Instagram's fault. No, it's. Every second post is a sponsored post. It is absolutely true. You terrible. follow horrible people then. I've never had a sponsored post. Like, I get a sponsored post every 10 posts, maybe. Oh, my God. The the advertisement on Instagram is just everywhere. You say, what did you say? I stand it. It's just what did you say? The, the ad- advertisement. Ad- advertisement. Ad- how do you even say that? Had advert, advert. I can't even say that. It's an advertisement. An, okay. advert- an advertisement? Um, yeah. Did I say that right? An advertisement. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, it's just, I can't stand it. I can't stand the whole platform. It's just, it's just, nah. It's a no for me. It's a no for me. Computer right, well, you says will find, no. You will find Amanda on Twitter, and she will be posting consistently because that's kind of her thing now. Yes, you will find me on Twitter. Amanda, find me on Twitter. Twitter I'm, is lit. Give them your Instagram or your Twitter handle. Sorry. Give them your Twitter Twitter handle. Twitter. Twitter handle. Okay. My Twitter 
handle is Amanda Leva. So that's Amanda, I-L-I-V-A. Um, and that's that's my Twitter. Everyone go me follow out. her. Send like DMs. Like all her pictures. If you have any spare um, appendage pictures, make sure to send them her way. And she's doing ratings. Like for a limited time, they're going to be free. And I think she's going to like... I'm going to report you for abuse. She's going to report you, you for some... For some uh, never mind, don't worry about it. Anyway, and she will also... Amanda will also be running the official SMG Sound Network Twitter because I'm not very Twitter-versed. She is. So we're just two sides of uh, the same coin. Yes, we are. Apparently. So you better post about some updates. Because we need more than two people from Australia, because that's kind of the whole reason you're here. We're supposed to hit two demographics. I, I will. Okay. I will. Guys, follow us on um, SMG. S- SMG Sounds. Sorry, I just had a brain fart moment. SMG Sounds Network on Twitter. That's our podcast um, page. We are also uh, getting YouTube up and running pretty soon i'm still working on that because that is a doozy but oh we forgot to tell the uh, the users amanda we are now on patreon and i'm sure none of you will want to donate now because this is episode one technically i'm counting this as episode one yes so this is our second episode yes, it is. and we are pretty uh we're not you know that far in but every Single donation helps us better the show. Like, you know, it'll help Amanda get a better microphone and, uh, you know, maybe uh, help her feed her 10 children because they're dying I'm of hunger. Poor. They're they're dire of hung- dying of hunger in a basement. And the first 50, pa- the first 50 patrons that are not Amanda get a little something extra other than the perks. Perks will be video. We'll start, you know shooting a video you can actually see us and uh you get bonus content any other now the mini- videos are going to be fun because you know of the time difference <laughs> either yeah. one of us would be looking you're gonna look like a straight bedhead and i'm just gonna have like a slick back and a tuxedo and shit it's gonna be lit but yeah you guys uh if you feel inclined if you're feeling generous maybe later down the line Subscribe to Patreon. I'll make it worth your while. Trust me. And um, I just want to go on one the more. The first hundred is going to. No, not gonna, the first hundred. I'm personally to you. The first 50 people will get something special. He'll, he'll, he'll fly to your house. Yes, 100%. Do things for you. And to you. <laughs> what? Nope, edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> That's. That's that's you. You're going to catch a case if you. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Um, I want to go on one more rant before we wrap this podcast up because I know it is uh, mm-hmm. what like six a.m. over there now. You're getting pretty pretty sleepy. Uh, go back to sleep. Six thirty. Yeah, I want to. There's something I've noticed. I went to uh, my favorite hookah spot. Everyone knows uh, Paul Myra, and one of the. Uh, I want to say co-owners. I don't know. His name is Elias. Shout out to Elias. It's really hard to say his name in English because I'm used to saying Elias, but Elias, whatever. So he's a really talented artist, and he draws all the murals for the shop and all that. And he's showing me all these like clothing pieces that he does. Like It says art on clothing. And he showed me this amazing jean jacket, and I hate denim like i can't pull denim off i look corny as hell in denim but it made me want to wear that denim jacket so bad like it was one of the coolest denim jackets and i was like dude you should start like selling this and he was like yeah but every time i put something up nobody will like buy my stuff so i just kind of gave up and that's like a common story for a lot of my friends that make clothing is that no none of their friends really support them and like people are like oh People put money into Nike and Adidas and all these companies, and they're like, oh, but I'm paying like $60, $70 for Nike because they're Nike. Let me assure you, Nike is not Nike. Nike and Adidas and all them 
have been bought and sold so many times that they are probably they're probably all the same company. So you're just giving money to some corporation and you're buying a plain white t-shirt with their name on it. Why don't you buy they might charge you less, they might charge you more, but in the end you're getting something that's unique. You're getting something that nobody else has and you're going to yeah. get something that's a conversation Holy piece. Shit. I mean, my friend Dalton, shout out to Dalton, he used to make these necklaces out of stone. Like he knows how to wrap stones and all that. And I would wear these like his necklaces and bracelets out and that would be like an instant conversation starter. They'd be like, oh, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, my friend makes them. And like, you know, talk to him about that. So support your friends, please. Especially during this pandemic, because for a lot of people, that's probably the only way they make money. I mean, I know in America, well, in Florida, shit's like popping, so people can get jobs. But in Australia and in all those other places, I don't know how stuff like that's going. And also... Your friend's artwork is probably dope, and you should stop telling them that it's dope, and you should start showing them that it's dope. You should start buying it. You should start wearing it. Just rep your friends because that's how they're going to get their business taken off. Like even this podcast, like what we have 35 listeners, most of them are my friends. Like without my friends, I would have never gotten to 10 listeners. I would have never got to 20, 30. We're never going to be able to get anywhere without our friends so support your friends art and i appreciate my friends who supported mine that's you know that's about it you have anything to add to that thank you to joseph's friends because i don't have any well you better go make some friends i'm too old to make new friends oh my god she's 26 guys i want you to kill her in her comments please kill her in her comments I, i don't go to work I don't go to work. I can't make friends there. And the people I work with are like in their 50s, 40s, 50s. You live in the land of milk and honey. Like whenever this lockdown shit ends, go out and meet people. (sighs) I'd rather die. All right. And we have Amanda from (laughs) the podcast, a social network without a social network. (laughs) I... I don't like. Friends. You know where you would do amazing. Where you should move to New York, because I know there's a stereotype about New Yorkers being all angry and they never want to talk to people. It's true. You would do great in New York. Like that you is just, kind of like Melbourne. You just put your head down and just keep walking. If somebody talks to you, you just look at them stupid. You would fit perfect over there. Don't ever come here. That is that is literally that is literally Melbourne's vibe. Is that. Everyone's in black. No one speaks to each other. You just keep walking. That's grab no, your coffee. That's no walking. fun. You you got to come here. I'm going to make you more social. That's my goal for 2021. Ugh. 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 No, hey. thank you. You're going to be thanking me. I don't want to be social with all these nasty corona people. Corona people. I said after the virus. That'll be 2025. All right. Whenever that Ugh. happens, you got to go out and make friends. That's your homework. No, because you know when I make friends is with Satan people that ruin my life, and I don't want it, I don't want that in my life. I don't need that energy in my life. Just because you have horrible taste in dudes does not mean everyone is a piece of shit, Amanda. They're like reincarnations of the devil, and I They're don't not. want that energy in my life. So well, I'd rather be. You hear that all of our you hear that all of our listeners that may or may not want to get to know Amanda because you like the way she talks and is compelling you have no chance of being her friend you devil person and with that being said I wake up. Amanda I wake up in the, I wake up in the morning and I saw like my notifications I'm like Satan is that you <laughs> you are a horrible person No, they are horrible people, and they should never speak to me again. All right. Nobody ever speak to Amanda is the lesson here. Now, Amanda. No, not not other people, just that specific person. If you're out there, thank you for treating Amanda exactly the way you treat every other woman. And Amanda being too stupid to realize that. Every other woman, he treats them nicer than he treats. 
Well, that's because you're trash. You let him. You let him treat you like shit. Do you want to have a therapy session now, or do you want to end this podcast? No, and then and then now I just treat him like shit, and he is having a mental breakdown. But yeah, do I care? No. He's crawling back to you right now on your knees. We all believe that. Anyway, can you? Uh, how about you recommend a song to the audience? Like a song. Oh a, my god. A song that you know. I don't want to say a sleeper pick because that's kind of you know, but something that you heard what that is, caught is, your ear. What is a sleeper pick? Like a song that you heard that like may not be super popular, but you really like that song. Like people might not know about it. Oh. Put somebody on. Plastic plastic plants. And who that's is that? That's the title of the song. I don't know. Who's it. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me let me look it up. Yeah, you should do your Google. Um, I don't know, but I heard I heard that song like it was recommended to me on Spotify, and I was like, oh my god, it's such a good song. Um, oh Christ. I'm just, oh god, I don't know. I don't know her name. Okay, do- so her name is great, Mahalia. Oh, I'm, I've heard of Mahalia. She's sweetie. she's dope. Yeah, Mahalia, Plastic Plants. It is oh, such a good song. It is like a really sweet song. I'm looking for mine right now because I can't pick. There's a lot of them. You're doing great, sweetie. Shut up. Do you, you didn't know the person's like, I got so many to pick from. Like, I don't even know which one to even give them, you know? Like, what kind of sauce should I give them? Should I give them the barbecue? Should I give them the ketchup? I don't even know, Amanda. I got so much sauce. One might even say I have too much sauce. All right? So relax. Put some respect, okay. on, put some respect yeah, on my name. All right. But yeah, listen to Plastic Plants. It's fantastic. Here it is. The song is called Keep It Moving. It's produced by Static Selecta, and it's got Nas, Joey Badass, and Gary Clark on it. And that song is beautiful. And... Probably anything that Static Selecta makes is nuts. So I would check just him out in general. But other than that, yeah. And uh, Catherine John, Blind. I'm still bumping that. That's really dope. My favorite song off that is Mr. Jester. She could really sing. And somebody really hurt her. So I love hurt music that sounds good. That's like, I'm a sucker for that. Like if somebody broke your heart and you want to sing about it, I will listen all day long. But I think that's it. Yeah. That's all we got. Um, um, guys, are, we, are we saying like the genre of the song? No. In we, case people we, are like... We don't, get bound, we don't get bound by genres. If people want to judge it based off the genre, then that's their problem. Okay. Then listen I, to all the songs that we recommend. I only listen to classical music. Like, oh, shut up. This isn't the podcast for I you. I love classical. I know you love classical. You freaking lame Anyway... Thank you guys for tuning in again. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and uh, check out our website, wdikpod.buzzsprout.com. And that's got that's our every link. It's got a link to our Patreon. It's got a link to our YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. It's got you could play it right through the uh, through the website. I know a couple of people have done that. And mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Well, well, I've decided we're going to drop every Sunday. I know I dropped the other one Monday, but that's only because we recorded on a Sunday. But if you're fine with this recording schedule, we could probably just drop every Sunday. Is that cool? Well, my Are you Sunday, asking me? My Sunday. It would be Sunday midnight Eastern time. So I don't know what time that would be in Australia. I don't know either, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Okay, it'll be available sometime on Monday in Australia. No, it'd be like a Sunday night. It would drop Sunday night for you guys, and it would drop Sunday at midnight for us. No, we're way ahead of you guys, so if it's Sunday midnight, I don't even know. Listen, it'll come out whenever it comes out, okay? No, Amanda, we have to be consistent, and I'm the one running the show, so it's going to fall on me. Everyone's going to hit my mentions like, where's the podcast? Because surprisingly, you know, people actually enjoy this. 
And I thank you guys for, you know, all the all the nice comments you guys uh, came to my DMs with. And all the mean ones, too. Thank you. I like constructive criticism and non-constructive criticism. I like that brick that somebody oh, threw okay. through my window. That was pretty lit. But other than that, yeah, I think we can. Oh, uh, from me. What happened? No, that brick was from me. I flew all the way to Florida just to throw that brick and then get on a plane. You got, the, <laughs> you got a hell of an arm. Because I'm a hater. You are a hater. A hater. <laughs> the the hater. Australian podcast. The Australian listeners are going to hate me. But it's all good. Okay. All right. I think the Americans will hate me too, but the feeling's mutual. All right. Well, we are we are out of this bitch. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Nailed it.